Hi, I'm Nicole Maines. I play Lisa on Yellow Jackets, and you are watching Pop Culture with Pat. Hey guys, welcome back to Pop Culture with Pat. So I am so excited to be joined by today's guests. Today, we are going to be talking all things Yellow Jackets with Lisa herself, Nicole Maines. Thank you for coming on the show today, Nicole. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Oh, yeah. I, I can't wait to, to get into all things Yellow Jackets. But before we even do that, one, I want to let you guys know that this is going to have spoilers for episodes one through eight for season two. So just a heads up, if you guys haven't seen those, make sure you watch that before you watch the interview, just in case. Um, and then before we get into all things Yellow Jackets, Nicole, I wanted to kind of start things off and just ask you if you can just talk a little bit about your journey over these past couple of years, because I feel like it has to have been pretty crazy for you because, I mean, you've been on things like Supergirl, The Flash, mm -hmm. writing your own uh, graphic novel. Mm -hmm. Now you're on Yellow Jackets. So can you just talk a little bit about what these past couple of years have been like? Yeah, I mean, it has been a whirlwind from, I mean, I... So the first time I got to act on screen was when I was a senior in high school and I did one guest spot on an episode of Royal Pains and it was so amazing and I had such an incredible time. I was like, I just remember thinking like, oh my God, I love this. This is so cool. Everything's awesome. And, and I just like, can I do this for the rest of my life, please? And then I went to college and I didn't work through all of it. Um, and then right between my, jun my junior and senior year of college, I got to go out to Los Angeles to film Bit, which is like uh, this indie vampire film I did. Um, it's still one of my favorite things I've ever gotten to do. And that was great because I met all of my, my LA friends and, and I, I got to find my tribe here. Yep. Um, and then while we were filming that, I booked Supergirl. And so I went right from that set to then I like I went home for like two days and then I flew up to Vancouver to start doing that. And it it since then it has just been like this crazy, like the way I describe it is like in the Wizard of Oz when she steps out of her house and it goes from sepia to technicolor. Yep. And I'm, it's been like that. It's just like this crazy whirlwind. And now I'm writing comic books, which I never expected, to, which was never something that was on my radar. <laughs> but I love it so much. And it feels so right for me, um, which was unexpected. Um, it's been a lot. It's so, I mean, I'm always afraid that it's gonna like the well's gonna dry up and it's just gonna all of a sudden like as and as quickly as it started it it, it stopped um but that's not been the case yet um yeah. so i'm just having i mean i'm 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 having so much fun and getting to do all of these amazing things and work with these incredible people and oh yeah and, imagine just trying to enjoy every every little moment that you have yeah, yeah it's 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 a lot um I was I was just speak, talking about this earlier today. Um, unfortunately, it all comes from the same part of my brain, um, and it's it's out. So I'll be doing all of these different projects, and then I I'll, I'll be working on the graphic novel, and then I'll go to film something, and and I'll write like a little eight page story while I'm there in between for you know this other thing, and then I go back to the graphic novel, and I'm like, why am I so burnt out? I haven't been looking at this, but it's that same creative part of my brain where regardless if it's comic books or, or art or, or, or acting, it's all creating yeah. all the time. So n right now where I'm at is just trying to find ways um, to shut that part of my brain off for a second. <laughs> so yeah. I'm not, not constantly like scraping like bedrock. Yeah, even no matter no, no matter who it is, I feel like even if you you absolutely yeah. love something, it's your passion. It's like yeah. everyone at some point needs to just kind of take a second for themselves, just to kind of reset, refuel yeah. themselves. So then that way, you know, you can keep going yeah. with well, those projects. Especially, well, especially if it's something that you love, because and this has been my struggle is all of it. I love so much, 
and I'm so passionate about all of it. So I just keep going and going and going and going and going. And then next thing I know, I'm buried neck deep, exhausted and completely burnt out. And I'm like, why did I, how did I, I mean, I'm asking my therapist, I'm like, I'm just so exhausted all the time and everything just feels awful and hard. And, and, and I don't, I don't have the energy for any of it. How did I get here? And he's like, well, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) No, I, I'm like the same, same way. It's like, yeah, you're just, you're just doing something. You're like, oh no, I just got to keep doing this, keep working on different things. And you know, eventually you're like, all right, I just need to, I need to take a break. Well, especially for any, any creative person. And I think especially folks um, in this uh, industry or anyone who's, who's creative, um, there is definitely the feeling of, I need to do this while people are asking. Yeah. And I need to keep saying yes, or else people will stop asking. Um, so, you know, that kind of like, oh, well, I got to get it while the getting's good. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't I don't want the well to dry up um, while I'm taking a break or while I'm looking away. And now I'm learning, and I think we all need to learn for ourselves that it's okay to put it down and trust that it'll be there and people will be ready for you when you come back. Yeah. Um, but that's a really hard, it's really hard to like, you know, like time's up, put your papers down, put your yeah. pencils down. And I'm like, no, I'm still writing. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, I have, but I have to do it. Yeah, no. Yeah, for sure. So I, I totally understand like where you're coming from with that. Now you're, you know, you've, you've been on this, the show yellow jackets when it came out last year was one of my favorite new shows that premiered. And so now, you know, you come on the show season two as this character, Lisa, and right, right from the get go, there was just something about your character. I was like, just that, that first introduction that we get with her, I was like, I, who, like, who is this character? I want to know more about this character. And so I'm glad as the season's gone on, we've gotten to learn a little bit more about her. Yeah. Um, What was like the, the audition process for her? And I'm curious because I know sometimes this happens with acting did you audition for anybody else besides Lisa? Mm -hmm. No, I just auditioned for Lisa. Um, I got the audition. When did I do it? In August, early August last year. And it was really easy. And I just did the two scenes from episode one. I did, um, you know, going in, giving Natalie the food, coming back in and getting stabbed. And I film. I did it like I filmed them in my in my office on against my blank wall. I filmed it on my phone with my mom. I wore this shirt because like the only like purple I had, um, and it turned out to be like that that purple that perfect like heliotrope yeah, color. Um, color. And and I I had a lot of fun with the audition, but I'm like such a perfectionist and overthinker, and and we're such terrible judges of our own work. So I was very sure that I like bombed it. Like I was like, oh, I, I sent it in and I was like, this fucking sucked. I just, I, and then I got it. And I was like, well, this is a valuable lesson in not listening to me (laughs) because clearly I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I feel like that, that happens a lot. A lot of times where, at least for myself too, like when, when you feel like you did awful, was it, you know, an audition or just like anything in general, sometimes you, you might've think that you did awful, but ended, it ended up being like some great work. Oh, this has been a theme for me for a long time. And I've really struggled to try to overcome it. I'm getting there. I'm not all the way there yet, but just yeah. trusting myself and just allowing myself to, give whatever performance I give and letting that be enough and not trying to control it. Something my acting coach said to me that I think about a lot is she's like, you have to learn to loosen your grip. You're holding it way too tight. Um, And that is like, it's so, because I'm such a, a person who I approach it from such almost a mathematical kind of standpoint where I'm like, if I just sit down and 
do my do my script analysis and I understand I'm like I got the moment before I know where I'm coming from I know where I'm going like what do I want and I'm like if I just do all the steps then it should like a science project I should just get this reaction yeah and then when I don't I like collapse it on myself yeah um allowing myself to just go in and and play and let the stakes come down. I think being on Yellow Jackets was really hard for me because, I mean, even that first day with like, just, hi, welcome. Do this scene with Juliette Lewis. I was like, I was like, oh. Okay. (laughs) Sorry, why not? Um. It was so hard and I struggled a lot of days when we did episode four, when we go back to Lisa's house and we meet her mother, I was really, really, and I'd worked so hard with my coach on it. And I was like, I was off screen. I like found this little, like in the house we were filming at, there was like this little alleyway between like the the fence and the side of the house that I like was huddled in away from it and I was just trying to like keep myself in this mindset and it was working I was so like just like undone and I you know teary and and then I'd go to set and it just like evaporate the second they yelled action and I was like so distraught and I was losing my mind all day I was like why is this happening why isn't this working why I'm I'm bombing this it sucks we finished the day the director comes up to me he's like hey that was really great like you know I'd heard really good things but that was really amazing and I was like (laughs) like some like something snapped (laughs) and I was like part of me I was like can you just please tell me I was garbage because at this point it feels like I'm gaslighting myself and I'm just looking for consistency (laughs) in my reality like I need there to be some some like it was like the story I was telling myself and what I was experiencing was so different from what everybody else around me was experiencing. And it got that. And after that, it started to get better because after that, I realized I was like, well, it doesn't really matter what I do. Does it like, I'm going to be sure it's garbage and I'm going to drive myself mad trying to fit, or I could just have a good time. Yeah. Or I could just do my do everything, prepare everything. But when I get there, whatever, yeah. just do. And and that's when I started having a much better time. And that's when I I think the scene started getting a lot better for me, just as the actor. And and there's this scene in the finale that I really really love. Um, that's one. That's my favorite scene that we did. Ooh. Um. Can't now now I mean I'm already looking forward to the finale, Nicole, but like now it was, like it was so like Yeah, it was just it was really it, for me it felt really special. Um Yeah, I mean you yeah, could... just all of the scenes after that, after I after I had that day. Then we then we when we filmed the bar scene afterwards, I went from that to the bar scene, um, which is another one of my favorite scenes. And that was that scene was so amazing. And oh, I, yeah. I, let, I let myself like let go and just did the scene and had a good time and trusted that I knew what I was going to do or trusted that I knew the character and I was going to do whatever I was going to do. And it's, it's so doing more of that and it's, it's helping, but it's a process. It's hard. Oh yeah. No, it's a challenge. You know, like, like, like we've talked about, it's not, I, I, I feel like for a lot of people, it's not something that just comes easy. I mean, I'm Mm -hmm. sure there is some people that are just like able to, you know, to, to jump into things like that and don't maybe criticize themselves. But I think that's just kind of a normal human emotion to want to be perfectionist, to make sure we're doing everything right. But you just have to let yourself be in the moment and, Mm -hmm. you know, just kind of experience everything. Well, I've, I've not, I've done my best work when I stop 
all of the chatter and I stop overthinking and I stop trying to control every little thing. And when I, and life in itself is, is in reality imperfect. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what I'm going for (laughs) with perfection because that's not how people exist. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a process. It's weird. It's really weird. Um, cause I'm just a person who loves there to be a right answer and I love there to be like an objective, um, thing to, to find. And I, in, in every professional <laughs> avenue for me is like completely subjective. Yeah. Um, I would say it's not always, not always like that. I mean, they're, oh, they're no. not like a, a right, just like <laughs> one particular answer. Yeah. Yeah. So now, now I'm like, <laughs> just constantly like, why have I done this to myself? <laughs> well, I, I can tell you, and, and then this is not just because, you know, I'm talking to you on the show right now. I can tell you that your character, one of my favorite characters of season two, and also just the relationship that's developed between you and Natalie, Juliet Lewis on the show has been one of my favorite things of this season as well. Thank just you. the the little moments like where, you know, when you guys are at the bar, different things like that, you know, I've, I know sometimes people get caught up in like the, you know, the action or, or different things like that. But I always like those little moments with the characters because because that's where I feel like, you know, you, you get more connected to those characters. You know, you see growth from them. So can you just talk about working with, you know, you talked a little bit about already working with her, but working with Juliet and um, just how has your relationship as those characters relationship evolved? How did your relationship evolve with her? Well, I think one of the most beautiful things about that storyline in and the way and the reason it works so well is because their friendship was growing as our friendship was growing off screen. And Juliet's so amazing. And I remember that first day on set, and I will always sing her praises. My very first day on set, I was there terrified. And in the like in the craziness of, you know, first day back, you know um season two she came she found a moment to to come up to me and and say hey you know I just want you to you know take a breath and know that you're here because you smashed the audition they love you you're you're right for the role you deserve this we're gonna crush it and you're gonna have a great time like it was just like so like she didn't have to do that and it was so nice to have her sort of ease all, all of this stuff that just comes with being the new guy on set, doing, being the new kid in school, first day jitters. Yep. Um, and we just did the scene and had a great time. And she's so awesome. And I love getting to talk to her um, just about like art and, and, and everything. And just, we had so much fun together and she's so funny and so talented. And when watching her and doing all those scenes was just like a masterclass. And she's just so fucking cool. (laughs) She's like just such a cool person. Um, But the the scenes were so much fun. It was so easy to just like get lost in, get lost in the moment with her. Oh yeah. I imagine like, I mean, she, I've never gotten to obviously meet, you know, her, but just, I get that, that vibe, that feeling that she just seems like a very cool person and like mm-hmm. you said, I mean, coming into a series, you know, especially second season of a show, that just me must have felt so good in that moment to, yeah. to hear that from her, you know, to yeah. just, especially where you were kind of thinking, you know, about like you're, you were kind of like in your head. Oh, yeah. They were all like that. They were all so welcoming. And I was so terrified being like, you know, with all of the, like, you know, legends, like even meeting Simone. When I met her for the first time, my my partner Nate and I had literally just finished Obi Wan. <laughs> and meeting her, and I'm like a huge Star Wars fan. And meeting her, I was like, yes, I am. Oh my <laughs> <laughs> and I, and same thing with um Christina. We just finished Wednesday. And I was like, and I had to like kind of be like check myself and be like <laughs> Hey, you know, it just finished. You were awesome in that, man. <laughs> that, was cool. that was cool. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Not just too not much. Cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, it was so, and Melanie was so sweet too. And they were all so welcoming. And it was such an amazing 
just group of people to work with and get to do that. And, and it was really fun. I had a really good time on that show. Yeah, I wanted to ask you just as as a fan, I, I've been a fan of Christina since I was a kid because I kind of grew up with a lot of her yeah. roles. So we, we finally, I was so excited to finally see that you got to share a moment with yes, her. Yes, I episodes. loved that scene. I loved, loved, loved that scene. Can you just, yeah, talk, you know, a little bit more about <laughs> working with her and then do you, do you ever see, you know, in the future, do you see the, uh, a time when those two characters would get along with each other, Lisa and Misty? Ooh, well, mm. <laughs> I mean, you're asking me this pre-finale. Okay. We, so yeah. I'm not going to spoil anything, but just yeah. knowing what goes down in the finale, absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> All right. Absolutely not. I, listen, we know forgiveness is Lisa's thing. Oh. <laughs> it would take a bloody miracle. A All freaking right. miracle um, for those two characters to get along after after what happens. Um, and, but doing that scene, Christina's great, and I love Christina. Um, and she's so nice. Like even seeing her, I saw her, I ran into her cause we had ADR book the same day and she was going in and I was leaving and I was waiting outside by the car or, or I was waiting outside for my car. And she like runs up to me on the sidewalk and she's like, oh, and I was like, Oh my God, I love you so much. <laughs> I've gotten to meet her Absolutely. in person a couple of times, um, like at comic con and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she's just like one of the nicest people I mm -hmm. feel like you can meet. All of them, all of them are so spectacular. Um, that scene was really fun too. Um, and as we were doing it, we were talking and she's like, they, they made your character so like annoyed with me. <laughs> and I was like, the way I looked at it was Lisa's, he, she's like here, she's come to this intentional community to find herself and find hope and but honestly find a reason to live she was like she was ready to go and now and she's been doing so well and now she is here playing babysitter for a bunch of like dysfunctional adult women <laughs> and <laughs> i feel like she's been and this is what i told christina i was like lisa has been trying to like herd cats in the form of just Natalie all season and doing okay. And then you throw Misty Quigley at her. And I think that's what like, that's the straw that breaks the camel's back. I think Lisa like has no fucking time uh, for Misty's being Misty. Which is she's completely like, understandable. Oh, don't, she's like, listen, man, either get in the tank or don't. But I'm done. Yeah. One hundred percent done with you women. Like I'm trying to find a reason to live, and I'm not so sure I want to anymore. Yeah, no that that scene was just you could just like get like you said you could just tell you could see how annoyed she was with just like like the situation and just like she's just like I'm she's she's like man I am Lottie's right hand girl and like who are these women that keep showing like if you don't want to be here don't be here. Yeah, just like, leave. No one wants to. <laughs> I keep trying to like convince people to do the therapies, and nobody wants to. And I'm like, yeah. then leave. Yeah, just, just <laughs> leave. Just get out of here. <laughs> no, you can time you want to because it's not a cult. <laughs> so I'm curious when when this show like first starts. You know, we get a couple like scenes with your character, and then we kind of get to learn more about her as the show's going on. Mm -hmm. Did you, because I know sometimes this is something that actors do, sometimes they don't. Did you come up with any additional backstory for Lisa other than what the writers had given you initially? Or did you just try to go into it with just what they were giving you? I mean, I had, obviously, there's always, you have to fill in a lot of blanks for yourself. Just as a as a actor, part of the, you have to create a character and you have to have some understanding for her. Um. So I came up with like a couple things of like where I think her father might be, you know, I, and, and they, uh, and they changed the scene a little bit, but when I first 
got the script for what episode was it? Oh, I don't remember. When Natalie was shoot firing the gun. Yep. And, and and Lisa reacts to it in a really visceral way. Um and she there's this moment where she's like begging Natalie, because Natalie just keeps firing. And she's like, You stop it, I can't stand it. And I was like, What do we mean here? And they and they cut that from the episode. But the way I took that is I think that her I I the backstory I gave her for myself was I thought her father had maybe shot himself um and she ha- was around for that and she that would, heard that that would make sense um although I don't know and, and it's always like you know it's I you know if they want to create a different backstory for her I'll you yeah. know, just shift it um yeah. but that was just like the th- the justification I gave but <laughs> the character thing that I gave her always was I think she smuggled in like an iPod or something. And I like to imagine that she sings ABBA with her fish. <laughs> I think uh, that's her thing. I think is, like, I think she's an ABBA girl. <laughs> that is great. I was actually that was something I was gonna ask you about just because one of the things for me and I think a lot of people about Yellow Jackets the music choices, the playlists. There's so, especially like, I mean, season oh, one too, but this season, there's so many perfect needle oh, drums. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So ABBA, we have ABBA. Like, I was going to ask you what what kind of, like, what would her playlist look like? And so, like, what kind of artist would she listen to? And then mm-hmm. did you have, like, a playlist going yeah. to from set or anything? Yeah, I always create, I always find at least one or two artists that I really associate with a character like Nia Dreamer was Taylor Swift. When I did Darby and the Dead, I listened to a lot of BTS. What else? Um, and then for Yellow Jackets, yeah, it was ABBA and Sozy and the Banshees. Ooh, great, you know, great choice. For, for Lisa. Okay. That, that actually makes me even love the character even more because I, I've been on kind of like a Sozy and the, the Banshees kick yeah. fairly recently. So that that's kind of like weird timing for you to, for you to like mention that. Lisa. But, <laughs> yep. I, I love her even more and kind of going into the, uh, the theory thing too. <laughs> so I, Lisa has been the subject of a lot of theories. So for much theory. I love it. I've never gotten to be like, the subject for theorizing before i love it which we know now that she is not wilderness baby after <laughs> yeah. everybody, was, everybody was saying that and I, I like every time i'd see it i was just like <laughs> you're just like she is not yeah the wilderness baby. <laughs> and then definitely and, she is not and then the other one um Travis and Natalie's uh, or child, I believe, or no. Everyone uh, was, they thought maybe I was uh, Natalie and Travis's. They thought maybe I was, of course, Wilderness Baby. I was Shauna's. They thought I was um, Lottie and Travis's. Yep. Um, so it's just been although more, more people have just, uh, um, regardless of who my biological parents is, everyone has decided that I am the adoptive daughter of, of Lottie and Natalie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no it's but it's i mean it must be so fun for you you know knowing you know at least like if if you've been watching like all the episodes and like probably what you guys have filmed too just like knowing what's coming up to kind of just do you go on like the reddit forums and stuff like that i love, I, I i don't go on i don't go so far as on reddit but like i see what people say on like twitter and and um tumblr because i'm not a reddit kind of girl yeah. But yeah, people are like, <laughs> I saw one actually today. I saw one where they were discussing um, the wilderness baby and they have latched onto that so hard that they're saying that the wilderness baby is going to be reformed in the cave and will grow up to be. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> so you think I'm a zombie? Yeah. <laughs> wilderness baby? Okay. Hey. You know what? Uh, frankly, with this show, I was like, honestly, maybe. Yeah, I'll say we, we <laughs> don't know the show, especially this season. I mean, we, we still don't have like any confirmation. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things about it, too, is that it walks the line of you don't is know if there's something. Yeah, supernatural. If it's not, 
I'm watching this season. I'm kind of leaning that it's probably going to have like that supernatural aspect because some of the stuff we've seen. There's got to be, there is something in that wilderness that is just, but it, there's something even scarier though, where maybe it's, there's nothing at all. Yeah. And maybe it's just like human, like, I don't know how I want to say it. Like, it's not supernatural. It's just, I don't want to say human nature, but like a, a, a human response to extreme trauma. Yeah. And like, it would be even scarier if it's like, that's just what they did. Yeah. And it's almost perhaps easier to blame it on the supernatural than to take ownership over the heinous shit that you do. Oh, one hundred percent. And and if it's not supernatural, it's something that that can actually like happen. That can happen in in real life. So I think if that's what kind of makes super, it scary too. If, if it's not supernatural, it's just their fault. Yeah, yeah. Which is worse. That so means well, they just did that. That means yeah. they just chose to do all of that. Which, but you know, it's easier to justify eating your friend or sacrificing each other when you can blame it on some metaphysical force rather than just having to own, hey, we're going to starve if we don't choose to kill somebody. Because yeah. how do you make that? How would you as as a group of young girls make that decision? Yeah, no, you I mean, that... the only way to live with yourselves is to say, oh, it chose. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's like, I just think thing, it's like, you can't like, so it, it's just easier to. I like both complain. ways. I'm like, I love, I love the supernatural shit. I'm into Same. it, but I'm also into the like, yes, human <laughs> trauma force them to do the unthinkable. Oh yeah. No, I mean, either I'm fine with like either way that it ends up playing out because I think both of them are just have been so fascinating so mm -hmm. we still got you know i know they have the five season plan so we still got some time to see yeah. you know which way it's gonna it's gonna play out but to wrap mm -hmm. things up nicole you know just as far as is there anything else do you want to say to the fans and just you know about working on the show in general i mean i was telling my boyfriend today yellow jackets fans fucking rule i had just posted about um I had a, a comic book come out today that I wrote. I wrote the back issue story for, um, or the backup story for Harley Quinn number 30. And I posted about it today. And they, they, it was like Yellow Jackets. I was seeing a bunch of like Misty Quigley profile pictures, like so excited for it. And it has nothing to do with the show, but they were just so jazzed and they're so positive and like supportive and, and it's just really awesome to see. And they're, it's a really great bunch. Um, so that's been one, like seeing all the fan theorizing and the fan art and just the way that they get so excited for this. Um, and they're just so like sweet and supportive and enthusiastic. It's really rewarding. It's really fun as an actor to get to do all the scenes and then be so excited for when people see them. I can't wait for the finale. I can't uh, wait to see what people say. Um, because I've only seen, I think maybe two people guess it right. Like recently they've only guessed it. Like I remember when, when they all season, they've been theorizing, Oh, antler queen. Oh, what's going to happen. Oh, you know? And I was like, y'all are so far off. I had heard from, I don't know if it was, um, it was Christina Ritchie if she did like an interview and it was kind of mentioning the same thing that just the finale was like so watching it or filming it or what it was just so unexpected like they were not expecting it to to go the way that it does so oh it just gets it, me super it, excited. It, it, yeah it's um it's going in the way you think it's gonna go and then it like in like a split second just it's insane i and we only we only got a couple more days so i i can't wait for that th this week so again nicole it has been it has been a pleasure just you know getting to to know you mm -hmm. a little bit more and just you know hearing you you know talk about like the the show as well 
thank you, you so much for for taking time out of your schedule coming on here and and talking about the show and you're welcome back anytime in the future thank you very much i would love to hi i'm nicole mains i play lisa on yellow jackets and you are watching pop culture with pat